Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm glad to see that today we've already seen food on the agenda, and I stand between you and your food, or a couple of us stand between you and your food, so we hope to not keep you that long. Um, this is really an update, uh, a little bit about um, the Centre for Agriculture and Rural Sustainability. If you don't know much about it, I'll tell you about it at the very end. But I think that we're all consumers, we all eat food, we all need food, we all need sustenance, and we've all got a perception of our food chain. Um, from something as a rural little down in the left-hand corner of here that goes through and interacts with a lot of processing, a lot of transport, and finally delivers some waste products which are then issued into our environment. And our research centre actually deals a lot with the actual production side of things and the outputs from the uh, waste that comes from uh, production and the waste that comes from the human population and how that then interacts back and closes the loop within the production system. These are all challenges that we're faced with um, on a daily basis. Um, I guess the consumers, as most consumers, have all got a very rosy picture of where food comes from. It's quite clear it comes from the supermarket. And um, it's uh, you know carried around in beautifully polished pepper in trays by people wearing nice Marks and Spencer's jumpers. Um, and the product looks beautiful, probably tastes variable, but um, we have very, very well stacked shelves in the UK and we're very lucky such that we can indulge ourselves in huge amounts of chocolate um, and produce a fantastic food basket. But of course, it's not uh, really like that. Um, and we've had a few challenges just recently, which I'll just remind you of. And it's a matter of who you can trust in the food chain and where this leads to in terms of changing attitudes. So we have all the way to the processed foods that we like to buy because we can't be bothered to cook on a Friday night and we bung this in the microwave and it goes ping and we eat it and it's all lovely. But of course, there has been a little bit of undermining of our confidence in that particular supply chain. Um, because of the horse meat in beef products, um, processed beef products, that has really questioned where we are, where we do, what we're doing, and should we be doing it. And actually, it's taken this expose, if you like, to change the minds of many of our um, intermediaries, certainly the, the food companies, the, the, the supermarkets, to actually go back and resource local food and to source meat where they can actually keep um, an eye on the food chain and I think that's been a real big change for us um, and it will, it will continue to have an impact on us for the foreseeable future. Of course all our farmers are going, at last we've been telling you this for 20 years and actually what we've been doing in the food industry in the UK in the last 20-25 years is cleaning up our Food Production Act in terms of well health and well-being um, for our livestock um, and yet what has been happening is that many of our big supermarket retailers have been turning their attentions to where they can get cheap meat. Because unfortunately, um, money talks uh, more than welfare sometimes. So, we could go right the way back to producing our own local food, and we've got this beautiful allotment picture here. Sometime, I would say, looking at that, about um, June or July. Of course, we get to and from to the allotment by getting in the car, um, and this probably represents two or three people's allotments, and it produces um, something for them for, the food, for, their, for their own kitchens, which is fantastic. But if you've ever done this, and I'm sure many of you have done this, A, there is a fantastic health and well-being associated with this, but it presents you with a big fundamental problem. Glut and famine. In other words, in some months of the year, you've got far too much than you can possibly eat, and in many of the other part times of the year, you haven't got enough. Um, and of course, it happens like this small-scale production around the world, and this is the sort of difference in density that you get in terms of the labour that goes into producing that food. And in rural poverty in many parts of the world, that's the sort of density of family labour you need to produce just the food for your family, let alone any product. And I think that although local is fine and growing in allotments is fine and that's great and it, it is um, to be encouraged, there is definitely a need for farmers. We still need farmers, we still need people producing the product for us, we need regulators as well, and those farmers need both markets and technology. 
And there's an ever-increasing need for that technology to be developed and for us to understand it. And really, that's the focus of our research group. I'm not going to tell you to go out and hug a farmer, which I'm sure they'd be delighted if you did, um, but, but to just spare a thought for producers who are producing that product for us. So just as a summary of some of the recent projects that we've been involved with, and uh, just to... I can't put them all onto one slide because we've got 50 PhD students and so there's quite a lot of projects coming forward. But these give you a flavour within our research centre of the sorts of things that we've been engaged with. Right the way from molecular biology and sequences of genomes to try and understand how genes work in particular key processes um, in plants and in animals. Um, right the way up to marketing projects and green marketing products uh, projects um, and also communication projects. So these are our research themes in cars. If any of them touch you or you'd like to have a discussion about it, um, please come and talk to some of our research students, particularly our international research students who will be manning our stand outside and we'd be delighted to talk to you and, and discuss any potential work that we can do together. Thank you, David. Thank you.